between the moment we say something and the moment the students hear what we've said. Um, when the students have heard something, they respond and there is another delay of up to one second, um, sometimes even more. And so as a result, we see this big delay um, and, and you know, it's, it's awkward silence and we don't know how to fill it or what to do with it. Um, and I um, tell my students about this and I say, um, I'm not ignoring you and um, I know you're not ignoring me, Let's um, let's make sure that we keep this in mind um, and we um, we know um, that we're not being um, unfriendly towards each other. Um, this is when eye contact helps a lot more. Um, if you're working online, um, it's also very important to monitor. And um, here at our school, we have developed um, a system which I'm sure a lot of you already know, but I'm going to share it um, anyway. So um, what we do is um, we we use Google Drive to share um, quite a lot of the information um, with the um, students. And so um, for um, every student has their own file on Google Drive and they have the link and they can access it um, at any time and they can work with them. And so what happens in a lesson is I say, um, can you please go to your files? And they go, they follow the link. Um, you'll get the link and you'll be able to see it um, um, later. You'll, you'll get the link um, after the webinar with my slides. And so um, the students go into their files and they start working with the text. The task you see on the screen is, um, this is a text with gaps um, and the students have to um, look at the blue words and find um, the synonyms um, from the words in red. So basically, you know, matching the words. I want to know um, where my students are in the task. So what I do is um, on my computer, I open every student's file and I go and see where they are in the task. And I'll show you. I'll show you how it works. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. Um. So um. Here we are. Um. This is this is my Google Drive. Um. And this is um the. Um, folder with um, a lesson for my students. Okay, um, so I go into one of the students' files um, and I work with this. Yeah, um, over here, I can see where they are and what they are doing. And when I see that they've highlighted something, I can see this um, in Google Docs. Um, actually, um, so um, I had the words um, in the left column, find out, dilemma, generally, and everything. And as they were typing the synonyms, which they were able to find, um, I was watching that and I knew that uh, I can, um, when I can stop the activity or how I can uh, manage uh, the lesson. Um, okay, I'm going to try and stop sharing the screen. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Good. So that's that. Um, you're gonna you're gonna be able to see it later if you like, um, and see how it works. And also, if you have a question about that, um, feel free to send me an email. You'll get my contact details at the end, and I'll explain in more detail um, how we worked with that. Um, so the other thing is um, using the board. And here we're talking about both the uh, whiteboard in a face-to-face -face classroom um, and also um, the board um, in Zoom. Um, okay. Some ideas for you. Um, it's very important to write in big letters. Um, some students will have a problem with eyesight and they won't be able to see things, but they will be too shy to say that. Um, and um, it's also um, important that everyone can see what we have typed. 
Um, it's important to keep the board organized and use different colors because the board is a visual representation of what is happening in our heads. And in a lot of cases, um, what I do is I ask my students to write their own sentences, to draw their own timelines, to uh, write their own formula. Because when I write my formula, this is rep a representation of what is happening in my head. When the students write their own formula, this is a representation of what is happening in their heads. And for me as a teacher who has more knowledge and more experience, it's easier to decipher what they have written rather than for, for them try and decipher what I have done. Um, the other thing, and here we're talking about uh, weaker students more specifically, I, um, when I train teachers, I insist on printing instructions and putting them on the board if there is a big difference in terms of the level, or printing instructions on the handouts and giving the students handouts with the task and with the instructions. Um, I also insist on having instructions on the slide um, because weaker students sometimes need more time to process that. The second thing I insist on is when doing feedback, always sharing the answer keys, uh, either sending them if it's an online classroom or um, printing them and giving them out um, to the students in a face-to-face -face classroom, or if we are eliciting during feedback, noting down the answers on the board um, or on the slide um, so that um, a stronger student is giving us number one, number two, number three, number four, and where um, they're able to follow. But weaker students um, will not be able to follow. And when we are on number five, um, weaker students will still be on number three. And they've already missed a couple of things. So that is um, for them. Um, OK. So those two things are the things I, I um, insist um, on as being very important. And the other thing is grouping. Um, and if we say that we have weaker students and stronger students um, in our class, how do you group your students? Do you put stronger students together? And um, do you put weaker students together? Or do you group stronger and weaker students um, together? Um, can you send your ideas into the chat, please? Um, what you do, you mix them, okay? So stronger, weaker, stronger, weaker. Oh, interesting. Okay. Quite a lot of you mix the students. Nice, good to hear. Um, I've, I've been doing quite a lot of research because I often have to answer this question on the teacher training courses. Um, and the answer is, there is no correct answer to this question. Um, there's lots of different ways we can um, group students and all will depend on the task. Um, if, if, if it's a speaking task, for instance, um, I will often put stronger students together and weaker students together. And the stronger students will probably get a more challenging task and the weaker students will get a less challenging task. Um, so that, you know, the interest doesn't fade and um, the stronger students do not dominate over the weaker students. Um, and I've put a um, remark there on the slide so that I don't forget. And that's um, another very important thing. Weaker students are more likely to participate in small groups because they're, when they're working in a pair, they have no choice. They have to say something. When they're working in a bigger group, um, <clears throat> they, they can avoid having to say something. Um, they can avoid um, uh, participating. So um, in quite a lot of cases, I put stronger students into bigger groups, groups of three, possibly four, and weaker students into pairs. Um, so motivation is very, very closely connected um, to the classroom management. Um, and it's important to say a couple of things um, um, here as well. Um, when we um, establish the rapport um, and the students like us, the students learn much better. Um, there is one very important thing in psychology, which I often um, say in my um, um, webinars or training. Um, 
when we like somebody, we, uh, whether we want it or not, pick up the things from them. We pick up the ge some gestures, we pick up uh, words, intonations, uh, we start listening to the music they like. Um, so um, unintentionally, 